The best part here for Heroic is they have one map logged here on Vertigo in this with this roster. So there's no preparation G2 can do. There's no anti stratting or reading of their opponent, not at least coming into the game. So they're going to have to do it on the fly. Quick mid money for Amanek is going to land on the scaffolding. Here come the T. You touched upon like there's not much to go off of. Well, that means that for G2, they probably really tried to like the idea of reinforcing playing their own game. But that could play against them, right? Like if you're doing the same Ooh. as always. Heroic might be ready for it. And in this round, there's some early trades going down over here in middle. It's a four on four with an attempt to split into this B bomb site. And Borup trying to hold the line, wasn't able to do so. Kadian gets one himself. And it Ooh. is now all on to Tessas in a 1v3. Oh, but everyone's so low. He's trying to finish the job. Hunter finished off, and now Bomb Planter. They're already getting close. Tessas, one bullet in the mag. He's not going to hit it. Kenny, down to 13. He just needs two connecting shots in this round, and that would push him over the line. There's one, but he doesn't know Nexus cross to the back of the bomb site. Oh, he gets oh. spotted. Tessas doesn't realize, and Nexus backpack, it almost gives him away. But instead, he fills it full of bodies and takes G2 over the mountain. Yeah, that's quite the mental image. X's body backpack. Over the mountain he goes. Wasn't a monster coming over the hill. It was a Nexa with a bag full of bodies. And while here, heroic, only down to these pistols. It's pretty cool. They're all over on A. What can they do? Tune in tonight at 9 p.m. to find out. Yeah, we're actually uh, putting a pause in uh, for... <laughs> a lot of hours now, six hours. Of course, we will be Tendi anxiously taking... awaiting the result of this one. An extended hiatus from the action for Heroic as G2 move up the ramp. They are going to be committing to A, though, by the looks of things. Five players here for G2, with Jax coming in late. So nico has got a flashbang ready. He's going to jump throw that, pop around the corner. This could work for Heroic in getting a couple of kills, but converting the round is, is unlikely here, and they might just die before the flash even gets thrown. Look at how close Kenny is already. Oh, dear. Molly goes. Nico flashes, but there it is. They line up. Kenny beats them to the punch, and they all go down like a house of cards. Kadian, good luck. Wow, Hugo, are you really going to jinx him like that? He was about to make Harry. a play. Yeah, I bet. He was just throwing five. Kadian under the boss and he didn't get anything done. Oh. This was great from Kenny. Like a nice bit of spray control as well, even to find that fourth guy at the end. They're only pistols though. We're not going to hype Kenny up too much on the back of it, but it's nice that he started strong here in this map. I think that's going to be, uh, you know, for, for G2, I don't even think we're asking for much. Just like no. one more guy to step up alongside next up. And I'd be fine. Like I think G2 would be fine with that as well. He got like 30 three kills back on you carry they still lost the map winning like one on twos as well on eco rounds for g2 like you know really should have just won the game off of the performance of nexa but that shows that sometimes a team is more than just one man because heroic have a, a really really great game back on nuke nice little re-smoke keeps g2 outside of the site for now and that's exactly what they want defaulting towards a Jax comes away from middle later We'll join them back on this AX execute. Nexus is the only man not here. He might go back to spawn to throw some smokes or just regroup with his team. Seems to be the game plan. Tessis is spotting. He's got the info. and He doesn't want to take a fight from that position. Not with the amount of heroic players that are... Or it's G2 players that are moving up. So, three smoke down. Teammates moving in onto the site. We have a bit of a rotate here from a heroic. Four on A with a flank available as well. Tessis waiting... Behind the smoke, Hunter is inside of it. And that fade could favor him, but the gun certainly won't. Nico could put a stop to all of this before it even starts. There's one. Oh, Nico's second kill does come through. The trade is in. And even if G2 back up now, Heroic is going to beat them to that B bomb site. So they may as well just commit with what they got. But what they got is not a lot. Tessis drops Hunter and it leaves it on two. Oh, and Borob's just seen they're pushing up, so now the rest of Heroic tuck themselves in, try and peek as a pack. And boy, does that work out for Heroic. They managed to keep Borup and Kadian alive at the end of the, the, the round, and the first on the board now for the Heroic squad. That was an attempt at running the bonus round from G2, so they're still coming in with a, uh, with a reinvestment now. It 
it is going to feature this off on Kenny. Oh, there we go. We get to see it almost immediately. Oh, Tess says, uh, sorry for that one, old friend, but he burns to death. Over at short, now Stown waiting at sandbags. No one accounts for it. No one checks it, but he pulls the trigger right away. And Molly will come through on the back of it, Stown. I don't think they're wondering where you are here. I think they kind of know. Stown, not exactly a hide-and-seek champion. It's a great rotate, though, from G2. They leave players here to actually distract and then to keep Stown in a fight. And even though Stown gets away with that wall bang, where's the bomb? It's already in B. So is Amanek. He's in CT spawn, for crying out loud. There's nowhere you can go if you're heroic. I feel like Stown definitely could have, you know, he, he wanted to get a value out of the position. He wanted to get a kill while he was still there and knew they could molly it. But after three players from Heroic dying in the same position on ramp, I don't think G2 would have expected Stown. And so if he stayed alive there and just let them pass, obviously there's a chance one of them checks him. But as long as he's looking the right way, he could have definitely gotten multiple kills off that position and, you know, won the round for Heroic. But really he gets one Heroic, uh, G2 see him and they go, nah, we want nothing to do with that. Both, T both CTs are going to be here. Let's just go B. We've already cleaned it. And Amanek, he has pushed even further looking for these exits. He won't find them, but he will take a third round for G2 just off of his positioning alone. It's a 3-1 lead. It's a good T-side start. We know G2 are an excellent T-side of Vertigo team. Yesterday, they had a bit of a rough start to the game and they, they didn't really show too much of a T-side against North. And I felt that that was underwhelming. I felt like they could do more. So right now we're seeing more and that's bodes well for G2 in this series. Already a map down, but 3-1 up in the second and control over the economy with AWP as well. Heroic, more than willing to fight here at ramp. They're toying around with the idea of pushing up on short side, and they look to do that now. If they go pushing at short A, they might get the info that there's only one man here in the form of Hunter. The rest of uh, the rest of G2, they're spread out across the map here at mid, and now coming into lower A, Hunter actually swings out short. He caught a timing in between the peaks to find his way up there. They thought it was clear, and he was able to delete Cadian as a result. Now the rest of Heroic, kind of curious once again as to what Ooh. Ramp has in store. Nico is going to get the info that Kenny's here, and he hears a bout of utility getting thrown around as well. So the info is here for Heroic, and you'll already see across the map players just peeling back from their positions, trying nice. to get into this what? A site, but they might not be needed. Nico is on for the ace. He's got four. Next, uh, will he hand it over? Will he give up the goods? Nico, not hunting for it, but I kind of want him to be. And he's not going to get the ace. It does get denied. Next is not ready to give him the satisfaction, but a great round from Nico nonetheless. Great shot from Nico and Kenny there as well. The quick two bullet tap, removing the AWP and four. Well, it's certainly not the ace, but it will do for Heroic. They'll take what they can get as they take control of G2's money. Hunter is the highest rated Vertigo player in the top 50 over the last 12 months. Yeah, I mean, definitely Vertigo gang. G2 have been part of that ever since its creation. But that's cool, Hunter. I mean, arguably, you know, the best player on G2, at least maybe more, one of the more consistent uh, fragging powers inside of this team, you could say. So for G2's most commonly played map or second most commonly played map, it's not really a surprise. He is very talented. 3-2 though, and an eco for G2 is going to be heroic. Likely leveling out the board here with a third round. They are armed well, and G2 not quite the pretty picture. Util and pistols, not even Kevlar behind it, as Stown and Borob take early kills towards B. Aggressive setups from the CT side. We haven't really seen the you know, the, the full idea, the full picture of what that bottom B area can be when CTs take it and use that control. Already, it's, it's very easy to run solo B in this map because those rotates off mid are so fast. But um, yeah, you, you do occasionally see teams smoking off that bottom B entrance and just uh, being able to take so much control away from their enemies. Amanek 
He's not going to throw this out the map. He's going to look for kills, and I'm all for it. Whatever damage he can get in this round is going to have long-term consequence for Heroic, but he's working A, and little does he know, no one's here. They're playing the bomb. Yeah, he's giving himself a path into CT, but he is going to go through this smoke. I actually like this idea from Amanek. That is the last thing that Heroic are going to expect. That's his second kill in the round now. And he's repositioning again. He's really trying to just be like a ghost. You know, he pops up, he disappears, he'll come back and he'll put the fright in you somewhere else. There is a man in CT. It's down on the other side, and he's ready and waiting. He's going to solidify the round for Heroic. Three on the board now. Getting this one tied up nice and early. Reinvestment coming through from G2. Now, in this North game yesterday, right, Hugo, we saw G2 attempt these A plays a hell of a lot. Yeah. Especially in these rifle rounds, and, and, and kind of to mixed bag results. Now, one thing I will say is that Heroic have already shown that this A bomb site is not one to be trifled with. G2, they're going back to a classic. It's the A play. We've seen this one before. Let's see if they can accomplish what they're hoping with it. It's a fast play up through the ramp. Wow. And it is just a slaughter. G2 get cut down. Hunter delivers a double, but that is it. And okay, right, G2, we've humored the ramp plates. We're, we're enjoying them. We like what you have to offer there. But I would love to see just what they have planned for elsewhere on the map. Because there, that was just a stellar flash from Heroic to set them up for the ramp peak. And they triple peek into it, man. They had yeah. four players at the A site early on. Like they are more than aware as to what G2 like to do on this map. And, and that's why I'd love to see G2 go for one of these A fakes, but with a B take in mind, right? We've seen them do that. And they're very good at deciding in the mid round. Okay, guys, let's go B. Let's get out of here. We take an A, we push them back. Let's rotate sil silently. They're very good at that. But I'd love to see G2 set up that out the game, right? Two bottom B with a bomb, work A with three, you know, cause enough distraction. You don't have to rush A like they did in that round. You just have to cause Heroic to rotate enough off of B not, that you can take the site. Not to mention that I think Nexa is probably one of the best B site anchors on Vertigo right now. Yeah. And he's right at home on this bomb site, man. He loves it. We spoke to him in interviews and he's telling us how much he likes it. I would love to see him just entrusted with the duty of finding these opening kills at this B side of the map. The duty of it is, he could be the man to make that decision yeah, as well. Sure. No one can stop him. The in-game leader and the frag and power behind it. Nexa has them both, the aim and the brain. But they don't have the game. That's not locked in here for G2. They are down in this one right now. A couple of anti-ecos for Heroic locked in after a fast A approach from G2. And now we have the guns back. This is the moment of truth. This is the big question. A tactical pause for G2 as they look to rip another round off of Heroic. Yeah, I think, I think at a bare minimum, right? Even if you're not toying with rotations, you need to get it out of Heroic's head that they can just keep stacking the majority of this A site, right? I think that one of the things we need to see G2 do is just spread out and look to, you know, e even, even if you get like a kill in mid and you're not actively trying to take mid on the back of it, right? Just to kind of serve as a reminder to the Danes that they can't be sticking four players out of spawn into the A they site. Going a, Harry. Whenever they do that, and of course they're winning the round. You're running into a five on four, but it's back to A for G2. They send Hunter up. However, this time you'll note the bomb is not in tow and they've thrown this short smoke. It's really not uncommon to see these fake plays hinge around this smoke. It denies early vision at short. It gives you a foothold. Now over here at B, Borup actually has gone aggressive and pushes down into B main, but he's decided against it. G2 have actually done exactly what I wanted them to do, which was set up two outside of B with a bomb. Wait, play passive, play like you're not in this position. Heroic might push, Borup hasn't. And G2 are going to make loads of noise on A because Heroic haven't taken an aggressive angle towards the A site. They don't have the info. Their most pushed up players, Tess is watching short from safe. So G2, they're going to flash into B loud and proud about it, taking control. So maybe it's the, the bomb going back towards A. Maybe it's the, the B fake after all. We'll see where G2 go with this one. They show control towards the bottom of B. They force actually two rotations away from Heroic. Notice the A site has been left open apart from Tess's with that re-smoke. Hunter loves playing inside of it though, and he might try and cheese his way in. Tessa is alone. Molly is going to cut him off, but they're already up on the site, and he didn't realize Jax was pushed, and he finds that kill. G2, a nice little B fake. It forced such a rotation. They've been on A every round. Heroic thought surely this is the time they change. 
and even just taking the bottom of B, not getting a kill, not showing presence, not doing anything more. Force Heroic out of the sight and into play retake. Right now, another man down from Kenny's orb, and that's going to make things even harder. Oh, Amanek spots them running away. He hears these rotations and he can tell the rest of G2, guys, the battle is already won. I'm going to start to hunt down some of these weapons and... There is a world in which maybe he could take one of these guns away with KD and... And Stown having this crossfire set up, he decides he'd rather keep their money in good standing and G2 are going to survive with five. As they secure this fourth round on the board. A nice adjustment there from G2. They slow it right down early on. They don't give away that opening pick. They deny much info the way of Heroic. And you see them just reap the reward of it immediately in this round here and now. They steer away from these fast, aggressive ramp fights. The ones that Heroic were pretty happy that they were yeah. taking to begin with. And a double AWP investment now over here on this CT side. This kind of screams to me that there's going to be an aggressive peak with one of these orbs. And we're already seeing that now. Just look at the setup on A. I mean, alone, they've got three players here. And, and they're not, not even necessarily fighting that deep because of the smoke. So Cadian's on the sandbags of the AWP looking for a pick above the railing. Got Nico throwing utility testers, watching short, but he can back off at any point and play that rotation. The rotation the heroic may require in this round. G2 are taking middle. Stown has his second orb here. Nice little Molotov on the boost as well. G2 uh, leaving no stone unturned in this round, and now they can boost up themselves if they want. Stown's watching for it. Needs to pick a position, though. Smoke is going to come down towards the elevator side. Back towards his side as well. Nowhere is safe. Stown has to give it up. G2 now own middle, but Nico's pushed the smoke and he's mowed down too. Great spray. Nico with a third, dropping Kenny's orb. And that is a great way of dealing with a mid-take from G2. They may have looked good in that position, but Nico looks better. Tessa should be checked and he will be, but the trade is imminent. Kadian pushed up on the ramp, can afford to fall back, leaving Nexa in a clutch that seems far, far too hard. Yeah, as good as he's looked, right? As nice as Next has been to watch in this server, surely this 1v4 is asking too much of him. With, with only 25 seconds left as well, he's gone all quiet at ramp. He's slowed right down. That molly has pretty much solidified it, and the kill certainly will. It's two for Kadian, three for Nico, and a sixth round on the board for Heroic. Man, I'm getting the impression that Nico loves a bit of vertigo, doesn't he? He's looking really good. He's learned all these little grimy positions. We saw him at short with that really nice 4K almost ace a few rounds ago. This time in mid, pushing the smokes. G2 calling in a tactical pause. Yeah, don't blame him after that one. <laughs> Very clean round. We all remember round. that little one tap from Amanek. It was a nice shot yeah. in, in fair fair play to Abanek there. Just barrels through the ramp smoke and deals with uh, Tessas. But yeah, there's a lesson. It's nice for Heroic to have a bit come back, uh, back their way, right? Like they were very good at, 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 you know, doing that to G2 in the first map. Oh, sorry. I, I flipped that sentence the other way around. It's nice to see Heroic get punished. Yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll move past it, Harry. You know, words are hard sometimes. And we've said quite a few here. Oh dear, orb trade to start the round. That's not so common, one for one. It's down drops next, but it was all a bait for Kenny to get that trade. And now it's down to Kadian with the main AWP. A good trade early for Heroic, ridding Nexa of the round. He can, of course, in-game lead here in this essentially spectator position, but it's never the same when you're not in the server and he's not, not alive in it. Kadian's peeled over towards mid. A has been left mainly uh, untouched apart from Tess's pivoting in the site that bomb going bottom b right now borup's clearing mid and if he gets this clear he wants to make an audacious play this is is a one of the best mid-round plays you can make in Vertigo. G2, more often than not, I mean, anyone is going to leave mid eventually when they go for an execute, unless they're planning on sending in a lurk. So if Barb can walk down ladder, he can flank B or A, but he doesn't know which site it is. And that's because the site is empty. G2 have walked into B and Heroic don't have a single defensive player. They're playing flanks. They're playing for retakes. The Molly will slow the bomb part down, but it still gets planted. And now G2 are watching the flank. They know because Heroic have four alive, they can come from anywhere and everywhere. So... Yeah, it's a great round for G2, but I've got to say, Heroic massively dropped the ball by playing retake on B in a 4-on-4. Four four. That just seems so unnecessary. 
and I don't even know if they're going to go for this. It's taking some serious time to even set up. That bomb's half ticked. Are they just getting exits here? Yeah, I, I don't know why Heroic left B. Like, they had three in middle, you, you know? I, and they didn't even get any information. They didn't push anything of value. So, while they get this awesome flank for Bora Panico, you only need one player there. Even if you had two, there's still two A players that, that left B open. So, yeah, that's a very weird round for Heroic. Maybe information going their way that we don't know and, and that they perceived wrong. Also, that trade with the AWP on B early, maybe they gamble off of that and go, well, they're not going to come back to B. Unfortunately for them, they do. Heroic dropping that round. It's back and forth here in this first half. But G2 at least putting T rounds on the board. And that's what we wanted here today. Oh, hang Didn't on. Want a, uh, a slow T side. I'm liking it, man. G2. It feels like they got a little taste of what other sites, other areas of the map have to offer. And they're keen to go exploring. Now, not everywhere is full of sunshine and rainbows here on Vertigo. Mid is actually a bit of a bloodbath. Sound coming out on top, and G2 sent back and away from this position. I say that, to be fair. Hang on, what's going on here at ramp? This is messy. Oh, dear Hunter. He what? pushes past the smoke. He hides in the ramp smoke, catches oh, a player pushed no. aggressive in Tessas, deals with Nico on the mid rotate, finds Kadian, who wasn't like considering that someone had pushed up the ramp so far. And Hunter, he has just made this whole round doable on the back of hiding in that ramp smoke. This should not have been a G2 round. And now it seems impossible to assume it's gonna go any other way. The bomb's going down in B. Stown is pincered between either site. He is gonna realize now, hang on. Uh oh, Hunter's rotating through ramp. And Kenny, okay, he's back at ramp as well. Knows, Stown yeah. now knows that Hunter's on this ramp rotation. He's already gonna be posted up and considering it, but it's Kenny that's causing problems here. Kenny and Hunter are both in the same place. They're both at the bottom of this B ramp. The bomb is out in the open for them. Stown is low. He needs the ace to pick this round up. They start to spam the bomb. He taps it, draws a couple of gunshots, and it's gonna be Kenny to solidify the round. The G2 sick on the board. They played that post plant very, very well. At first I was worried about the Hunter rotate down ramp, and then I realized Kenny, had done uh, all the right things in that B site, right, to line up with it. Falls back into ramp, knows wow. that Stown is going to have to take a lot of time clearing out those positions. Him and Hunter are together, and that round basically becomes unlosable there for G2. Right there is why Hunter's the best rated Vertigo player at all, of all time right now. Uh, I say of all time, of course, this map's only been in for a year or so, but yeah, what a, what a sick round. Pops up behind the sandbags, kills two, wins the round off the back of it. Nico even gives him a fight on A, which which lets G2 take that control of the site. So yeah, very uh, good round for Hunter. G2 keeping up appearances, back-to-back -back rounds here. They're gonna break the money of Heroic if they find just one more. Heroic have the AWP though. KD is looking deep down the ramp. He sees nothing, and that frees up a rotation. Heroic move two away. Oh, no, this couldn't get worse, though. Tessa's luckily is going to have the info ahead of time, but G2 have a full setup clearing position. There's no way they leave this unchecked. They've been looking at it every single time. Here they come. Hunter with the clear, and Tessa doesn't even get to play the round. Now G2 faster approach towards A. The AWP has come back into the site, but Heroic, one by one, they're losing to Hunter. He is just warmed up. He has found so much confidence off of that previous round, and he's not letting Heroic get away with anything. Two kills into the site. Jax needs to be very careful on the edge. Does trade down going through the smoke? Borup push CT as well. This is just a mess. Yeah, and I don't know if they know that Jax is on that kind of little finicky boost that lets you see into CT from the railing. And he has gotten down since then. They almost exposed themselves to him as they ran by the site. Heroic, looking like they're going to try and save once again, maybe searching for some exit kills, but there's not really much riding on getting those picked up here if you are heroic. This A site starting to look a lot more G2. And that's good, right? It, yeah. it, it's nice to know that, like, at the end of the day, this is how, I guess, it's normally meant to go for the G2 squad at A, right? And 
Yeah, they, they've they've approached it foot. very differently, right? Like, you know, it's, it's all about keeping things fresh, right? You just don't want to rush it the same way in the, the same parts and with the same util every time because Heroic are just going to know how to deal with it and set up well. So G2 have just been leaving it open, letting Heroic get comfortable or, or, or clear it, right? And I say that like with the quote marks because Heroic clear it, but G2 are just playing around the corner waiting for Heroic to rotate off. They hear those A footsteps, they hear the A players go mid as, as you're going to run there as a CT and G2 just walk up A. So, yeah, it's a good way of approaching it. They wait for Heroic to discount the position. Right now, it's a fake. Full util throw by Hunter. Runs right out of their sight. They're going to go mid quickly. There's no way Heroic are ready for this. They had a four-man A setup. No one in B. Stout's been pushed out of the spawn. I mean, Heroic can't even get control here. This is an excellent round for G2. Really playing with their food. And Kenny has two going in for the third. The Orc trades, but it won't get much further as Amanek gets a double with a max 10, leaving Nico alone. Nice kill off the P250, but good luck getting it out of this round alive, Amanek will not let him. Saves the orb, gets three, and puts G2 on an eight round T side. I don't think this one's stopping either. Heroic have one by round to make it so. I think we might get a ramp fight here between KD and maybe Kenny, maybe someone else. You know, with how Hunt has been playing, could just as easily be him in the firing line. KD actually was running for that early pick and decides yeah. against it. Sounds tried to go aggressive at the B side, but there's two players yeah. holding. With the and let's see, this is how I love to see teams approach Vertigo, because if you do try and force that B fight and you lose a man, well, imagine now how it feels to be heroic. You you rotate an extra player into B, but Borup is responsible for so much. Oh. And none of these shots are connecting. This B wow. side, man, it belongs to G2. Jax is tired of all this waiting around. Well, now, I well, if you like G2, if you like Heroic, and maybe third and finally, maybe you like Vertigo, boy, are you in the right place. This must be a, a, a fantastic day if you happen to like all three of those things. Because, man, have we had a great first half of play here in the second map of this series. Heroic now over on the T side, and they're going to look to get this one started off with a mid play. Jax has got the info. That's forced the rotation round from Nexa and the rest of the gang. Ooh. And mid has been picked apart my words down and nico left in a two on five but if you have blinked you might have missed this round hmm? what can these two do oh, i can see ahead oh kenny's gonna jump can't quite get a spot can't quite get an angle sound it's not the gun for accuracy but he will nail kenny s to the wall that bomb is still the object of his desires but right behind him is hunter from the back line getting a kill and leaving nico in a clutch he cannot contain Next is going to find him, and G2, that's 10 rounds, that's double dig, and that is the pistol in the second half. That should push them over the line here. Heroic are going to have to likely just eco this round if they want guns soon, because forcing here would just dig them deeper in that hole. Unless they have some big strategy behind their force by here, it shouldn't happen, and it won't. A single flashbang for Kadian and a PT-50 for Stown means that Heroic just want to play it fast and together. Or slow it together, that works too. This is it. Hunter, this is the moment. Oh. There we go. It's actually uh, it's actually Amanek's moment. Woo. I thought he was going to chase it down. That yeah. would have been cool. Amanek chasing after the cone. Catches it midair. Drops his gun in the process. I wish you could do that. I wish you could throw guns over the side. Catch up to them if you like get in the right position. You know, I'm sure like you could, fall. but they probably move faster than you. I know, man. That's the problem. Don't know. I've never Slow thrown, down guns. Yeah, I've never thrown a gun or a body off of a 50-story building, but maybe we'll have to do some yeah. field tests. We'll see. Fast play here for Heroic. They do net the kill onto Nexer. It comes at a cost, though. Kenny drops down. This beast split is very quick, and Heroic have beaten G2 to it. Stacked on the A site for the first rifle round, expecting a standard default from Heroic. They couldn't be further from the truth, but they could still be on the case. Kenny with three is making this retake happen. Ooh, Cadient spots a man up on construction. Smoke goes down and Cadient hiding behind it. Flashes in. 
Oh dear, Kadian's getting spammed away, and that will be him put in the ground. Nico swings at the very, very end, and he is able to trade one for one, but he needed to go one for two. Yeah. I mean, I guess that would just be none for two, because he would have won the round if he was able to get them both. G2, 12 now on the board, recovering, stumbling back to their feet. A bomb plant at least leaves the option to buy open for Heroic. However, if they're, if they're gonna make that decision, it is gonna be lacking in a lot of ways. Oh, Kenny, the king. No need for the AWP. He just finds three on the rifle retake there for G2, and great headshots from him. He's got the AWP now, finally. He's gonna throw that ramp smoke down as Heroic come back in with guns. They have bought around this buy with a bomb plant in the last, but look at what that's left them with. Four smokes, full stop. That's it, that's the only utility here for Heroic. So they are in a bit of a problematic position, and a nice shot from Jax is swiftly returned by Stown. A bit of damage onto the way of Heroic, though, in this round is leaving G2 somewhat with the advantage in terms of health. But for how much longer? Boost up does get spotted off of the jump. Kenny should be ready, and he will now just hold it safe. Aminek going to fall back. He doesn't need to re -peak. He knows they're watching him, and he gets that confirmation again. How many more times do you need it, Aminek? Pushing mid gets punished. It's down with one. He's going to go in for a little bit more, and Stown's done it. Nice entry from Heroic. He's left Amanek alone. He can't win a fight either. Tries to trade Kenny and Heroic. A very, very good round for them in terms of fights. Just headshots all across the board. That's what they needed, right? They had nothing in that round. They had no utility, so they needed to win gunfights. And some very clean kills from Heroic. We'll put them in this game. Put them on this T side. Can they stay there, though? That's the question. One round, it does break the money of G2, but we've seen Ecos be one, and this is a bit, a bit more than an Eco for the French. Ooh, Hunter tagged early on. He's going to look to get out of there. He doesn't want to hang around. Now, mid control here, looking to be the aim of the game for Heroic. So it goes down. Kenny, wonderful little dink on the back of it, and... Borup actually kills KD in there. Now, the, Kenny wasn't ever peeking during that fight, so that was just a straight up TK. Ooh. Oh dear, Borup. This round is gonna elude Heroic. It was looking good. They get out middle, the smokes are great, and it all kind of falls apart. Now, Borup hasn't been having the best of times on this map. That TK in that round there certainly hasn't helped out. Yeah, I mean, the individuals are, are looking really good on this map for G2. Heroic, they, they have three low players on G2 side by the end of things. Three 10 HP players, and that's because Heroic is whiffing shots, man, doing damage, not converting kills. Can't afford to happen versus a very warm G2 in a map that they are a big fan of. Need more than individuals to win this one, and Heroic, right now, they're down. Not quite out, but three rounds away from that very point. Three rounds away from Mirage. Another map where for G2, pretty good rim, uh, win record, pretty good, you know, streak on it. But Heroic never played it in an official. So again, kind of hitting the unknown in that map. But definitely more of a standard map than Vertigo. You would know what to expect if you're G2. The standards, the defaults, the go-tos. So less surprises for Heroic in the third. And that's if we get there, which is looking likely right now. G2 surely not going to drop the ball at 13 to 7. Well, that there is a good start for Heroic to build upon. Nico catching Amanek over the top of that smoke at ramp. This bomb is here, but I'm not sure if it's gonna stick around. Tessez removing another, brought down very, very low and tries to extend into that peak. Now, Kadian is nearby with the object of trading. The name of his game, he's served his purpose. Next, uh, arriving at A on rotation. This is all five players finding all five of these fights here for G2. He's briefly, but now the pullback comes in from Heroic. They leave A. There is Stown as well. If we could take a look at him, he's currently holding on to this mid area. And so he should be the man to deal with next. So he's actually waiting for this... Uh, this cross from, from Elevator. So there was like a timing where Nexa had a 1v2 at the site. Luckily enough, Nico holds his ground. And so eight now on the board for Heroic. Attack pause called through. The money isn't there for G2 in this round. And Heroic, they know that if they want to come back into this, 
how Barb has been involved in only 18 kills or deaths with G2. So he killed Kadian just to fight something. Take all you can get, I guess. Probably not the intention. Look, man, I mean, I don't know. We don't know, right? Like, Bara <laughs> maybe just wanted to, and maybe, like, that's something that Kadian offers the team. If they're ever feeling yeah, like they've need... kind of cooled off and they're not warmed up. Guys, I'm low. Just take a nice flick on me. Well, right now, Heroic should focus on shooting their enemies, not their teammates, because this comeback is realistic. It's not won yet, though. Broken money in this round has put Heroic in a very good position. Jax with the Deagle does get some wallbang damage, but Bora is on the other side, and he's waiting as well. Kadian is close. Heroic are expecting a bit of a mid-push, but it won't get given to them. Hunter tagged on the A side of things. It's going to move back, avoiding Tessas. There's the flash. Jax is going to hang around. Oh dear, not forever though. If you want to live, you've got to move because Heroic have four players out in mid right now. Jax reload gives away his position. He gets swung, does survive. Kenny, this is not the gun for a long range fight. He's going to try and get closer behind the boxes. The flash is so good though. Still G2 yet to be seen and Kenny pops out with a kill. That's worth it. It's caused enough chaos. But can G2 do, do anything with that? Good flashes continue here from Heroic. Kadian sets up Nico for a double and through the smoke G2 go into their own death. Heroic find nine. Four from Nico in that round. They're catching up, but they haven't done it yet. I think it is getting scary though. Like, uh... Kenny especially is looking so good right now, like so warmed up. You think about coming into this CT side, he got that 3k hold at the B site. Uh, a few rounds prior, he landed like a ridiculous double flick into mid. He's looking warmed up and we yeah. wanted to have a few more players, a few more individuals there for the G2 side. And that's very much started to become apparent here for Heroic. Oh, oh dear. Oh. Blows exchange through the smoke. It's kept in, I was going to say a four on four, but that's only for a moment. Jax has taken it back into the mantle of G2. And so now a man down, heroic. Ooh. They have recuperated. It's down finding a nice little opener into mid onto Mr. Kenny S. And now this B site maybe feels like a tantalizing prospect. They just get the info that two players were rotating over. Nico's making noise, but this bomb is still back at A ramp. Oh. Not going to be. This isn't where this is looking to end up. Tess says, first man in, also the man with the bomb on his back. He's going to have a lot to do here at the A site. Luckily enough for him, no one from G2 is here to respond. I think he's waiting for Nico to move into position, and that's a real shame because also Amanek is flanking all the way through mid, and Jax is now rotating in from B. They've left Amanek to clear this B ramp. He's going to get the info. It's clear. Jax now knows it's the A site play, and he taps Nico out of the round. Tess says in a 1v2 to keep the dream alive for Heroic. Does he read the flank? He's had a rough game here, 9 and 17, but this would be a big round to potentially even take this series for Heroic. They've got a kill, and now Tess is in a clutch, in a one-on-one, -on -one, two to his name. Same story for Jax, moving on to the bomb. Tess goes wide, and Jax isn't ready for it. I love that from Tess as he hears the footsteps. He knows he can beat Jax to the fight, and Jax was not expecting a YT on the ramp. 10 rounds for Heroic. They survive, they stall, they save this map, but not the series, not yet. G2 still have some fight left in them. They only need three rounds to take us to Mirage, but this one will not be going their way. It's a full eco. Heroic's chance to make some money, make some moolah, and get 11. This T-side is warming up. Well, Hunter, I hope you had fun playing this round because <laughs> that's pretty much it over for you, my, my friend. He's going to back off with this CZ. Double naded down to nine points of health. Uh, sorry, five points of health. Reading numbers just really isn't my strong point for anyone tuning into the broadcast. What's the score? As we can see, it is 13 to 100 right now. <laughs> Heroic with quite the lead. Never been done before. Yeah, they just keep playing just to rub salt in the wound just because they can and they won't want to. But look at the push, G2 bringing the heat. Oh, it's messy. This could easily fall apart for Heroic, but they do get the kills required. Hunter trading again on five health. He's now all that stands and he will go down, getting a kill at least. But 
It's only an eco, and Heroic won't lose to it. Those are rifles, though. That could have been a very different story. 13-11. G2 with a buy. Orp. It's available if Jax wants to buy Kev Orp and throw it over. We'll leave him with no utility, which is never fun. But G2, before they buy, they're going to call in one of their last pauses just to figure things out. King Legolot. That's actually great. That's so good. Oh. So I guess 11 assists back in the previous map, considering he's on 15 right now. That's uh, oof. Never fun. But right now, Heroic, they are doing their best to make this game as unenjoyable as possible for G2. But G2 don't want to lose this one. Not here, not now. Not on the CT side of Vertigo. Just got to take it over the line. Might be might be about time to play retake, right? That's when you start losing rounds. That's when teams start playing retake. But they don't have a kit in this one. They had money for it. Jack still has six hundred dollars, Harry. This is exactly what G two did yesterday. It costed them the series. Will it cost them again? Yeah, we're gonna have to see. Because if that happens twice now, in two different series, I don't know what to believe. Kenny's been naded down very, very low in mid, but he's playing this bait and switch. This trade set up with Jax. The flashes go in. They've heard the orc chime out. They're hoping that the attention is fixated on that AWP, but that's not the case. Jax falls. And now a man advantage taken for Heroic. Sat in a five on four. Kenny already bought down low and he's staring into mid. Heroic, they've moved away. They've grouped up over here at the A ramp. G2 with a lot of emphasis on mid right now. Some noise is being made by Kadian and co as they move into position. So we are going to see G2 start to lean some players back in towards this A site. But it's only a double hold. And in a lot of these rounds where we've seen G2 pick it up, it's been on the back of like Amanek and Hunter here at this uh, here at this A site with support from the others going on a tear. Well, this time they're going to push up towards short. They've got to get it done between the two of them. They'll spot this first man, but they're surely not ready for Hunter. Ooh. And the continued aggression comes on in. Hunter could end this whole round right here, right now with the flank through ramp. He's biding oh, his time, dear. takes out Nico, continues to come on in. Now, this round's all over the place. There's players in mid still for Heroic. And oh, well, hope you weren't looking forward to G2 reaching 14 because it's been stripped away. Kenny left in the 1v3. They are everywhere. Yeah. I don't even know where Heroic are, and I have the mini map. So, Kenny, <laughs> how on earth is he going to get out of this with the orb? After Heroic took that first kill in mid, Stown just tucked in the corner behind the boxes and didn't move. He waited for Heroic to take A and then came in late. He didn't even try and beat the B players, right? Mid was open the entire time. He could have he could have walked past B, uh, walk past the double setup and, and kill the A players. Instead, he just waits, he waits, he waits, and as soon as the bomb gets planted, he starts moving through middle and just killing those rotations. Great work from Stown. He gets to, he also stops the save of the AWP, and that would have been the only weapon G2 have in this round, so that's a big exit kill from Stown. And Hunter, he gets dealt with as well after getting a massive kill on the flank also. So good work from Heroic. I like the A execute after a mid take there, but they still have four more to find. G2, they can win these Ecos. And right now, I think they're probably banking on it. They're hoping because right now the rifle rounds are not going their way. Close position for Nexa. Could just get wall banged out of the round if Heroic want to give away their position. That's the gamble though. That's the game. Nico gonna pull away from B silently though. G2 still with two players here. Hunter's spotting A ramp from a distance. That's where the bomb is coming late. Jack, uh, Jax has been grenaded in middle. That's a nice little pop nade over the wall. Stown trying to keep these players here. He's done that at least. That means A is pretty open for the taking with the exception of just Hunter. And Heroic actually gone back to B to put on some pressure. They won't be committing here, but if they get a kill, that will certainly do a good job of forcing rotations the wrong way. Man, Nico has a molly. I would love to see a molly close wood just for the, uh, just for the sake of it. And there is a man there. It's a pretty common spot to play, but they've completely abandoned B. They don't want to hang around you. Bang on, Hugo. It was that fake now with an A play looking to be the end result. <gasps> oh. Getting flashed in, and he's got to do a lot wow. with this Deagle. Takes one away, and he is running out of there, at least for the time being. He's uh -oh. going to reposition uh -oh. it short. Amanek finds a kill onto Stout in mid. This is where it starts to get scary, because Nico is just uncovered. But they've come in on this flank, and oh, now they no. know it's the A play. At this point, you know you're walking into a stack, so you're very, very anxious here. 
if you're heroic, you are checking everything. You are panicking. And there is 15 seconds left. You've got to be cooler than ever. Ooh. And Amanek aim punched into the sky. Jack he is going to try to deny the bomb, but he's not able to do it. Nico gets him through the smoke. Next, uh, down to a 1v3 to keep this one in the advantage of G2. Heroic about to tie it up at 13 all at next. Uh, what can he deliver with this Deagle? He was head and shoulders the top performer back on Nuke. But this 1v3 is surely asking too much of him. They double peek from ramp. They bid him farewell. And Heroic 13 all looking to get this series done in two. What is happening? This is 13-7. Harry G2 had this map almost locked in and Heroic have pieced together an incredibly good T side, a monstrous half. It's not done yet. They are certainly not out of the woods or over the line, but they have got a great chance of taking a 2-0 victory, taking an upset to G2. And as we mentioned, Harry, in the pre-game, what that would leave G2 is, inside of this group, a loss to North, a loss to Heroic, and with their only game left versus Astralis, that's, I mean, well, that'd be G2 2-0'd out of this group. That'd be them done and dusted. So, dear, oh dear. It's not the G2 that we wanted here after a playoff run in the road to Rio. Heroic. Good grenades, better guns, 13 rounds. It's all here. It's all to play for. G2, though, this is the best buy we've seen in a while. They've actually got the kit for a change. They can play retake now. Kenny with armor behind his AWP. Where did G2 go? Yeah, it's not going to be the ramp peak from Kenny. Instead, that gets entrusted onto Hunter. And he has already been naded out of the ramp. And these nades have been so good at stopping Hunter's aggression. And I think, really, that was like one of the big things that was winning G2 a lot of these rounds, was the fact that Hunter was allowed yeah. to go out, duel at ramp, take these advantages. That just hasn't happened anymore. And every time he's tried to come in with these ramp peaks, he has been put down to like 5 to 30 HP, it feels like, on the back of these nades. This is like a great way of taking map control from yeah. Heroic. They complete like, look, G2, they, they were trying to peak ramp at the beginning of this round. Well, now look where they've ended up. Ooh. They are all forced back into the site. Hunter is playing this bait and switch with Kenny. Kenny's going to try go wide here with the orb. If he gets the first contact at ramp there, oh. he wins it. But if the peak came from the, uh, the cinder block, it's a little bit more scary. Kenny does wallbang Tessez as well. So a man advantage here for G2. They were able to pick this up a few rounds ago and they didn't find the conversion. This time they need to if they want to take us to our third and final map. It's a big question if Hiroki actually going to commit here. Stan's going back and he's being loud about it. So he gets heard by Amanek. He knows that mid lurk is coming back to join the ramp here. Heroic fully committed. Hunter in a, such a good position. He's low, and so that makes this spot so good. Heroic might not check it, and all he needs is one kill for this spot. If he just pops out at the right time, he can win this round, but it looks already locked in. Hunter with a mow down. He finds both, and G2 just deal with the A play like it's nothing. Great work from Hunter and Kenny S. This might all be in, uh, in vain, rather, for Heroic. A 13-7 comeback. Six rounds in a row for Heroic, and they fall at the final hurdle. It's not done yet, though. Only 14 for G2. They haven't even locked in OT yet. And Heroic, you know they got money, but that money will come to a close if they can't convert this round or at least get a bomb plant at worst case scenario. So Heroic, pressure really is on. This is going to be the big round now. You see those grenades going into middle and up towards the A site being lined up right now. You know Hunter's going to be taking fight, so that is a very safe way of forcing damage without risking your own life. Jack's flashed out in mid, has to molly his retreat, and that's given room to Heroic. Mid has been a key of their T-side, whether that been taking it in fast plays up construction to B, or Stown coming in on these mid wraps to flank A executes. It's worked out wonderfully for Heroic, so no surprise to see them going back to this position here in a crucial round for the game. Kenny's molly falls a little late and a miss oh. shot, uncharacteristically so heroic. They're close. Oh, Kenny's yeah. given another opportunity, but he's not going to be given many more. Still a five on five as these awkward fights have struggled to go in favor of G2, but Kenny bye, comes bye. in, Hunter has the crossfire set up. And all the pieces of the puzzle getting removed here for heroic. Kadian left up in a 1v5 to try and keep this one going. 45 seconds left on the clock and Cadian surely not gonna even attempt this one. He backs away, it's 15 on the board for G2. Map point, just one away from taking us the distance now. Let's not forget, this was 13-7 in favor of G2. Heroic, they somehow tied it up at 13 all. 
only to have it slip away from them in the final couple of rounds. Plus as well, Edge, uh, something that's been great from G2 is that Hunter and Kenny, between the two of them, they both kind of have stopped going for these hyper-aggressive aggro peaks out of spawn. Yeah. Kenny was doing it in mid, uh, Hunter was doing it at ramp, and in that round, he was still taking some early ramp fights, but they both changed how they're going about it. They're not getting hit by the utility, and then they set up and they play together there once they realize it's the mid-take. They have that really nice crossfire between elevators and... Uh, and the CT run. So great stuff from G2 to get us here. Mirage will be that third and final map if we go the distance. And at this point in time, it's certainly looking yeah. like it. I think Heroic needs to change it up, right? They need to get away from A, go into one of those B fakes that, uh, or, or A fakes rather, with a B execute that has treated them so well. Getting shut out of mid in these last couple of rounds by the heavy setups of G2. And that's something G2 are very keen to do, right? Just like give up bomb sites or play 1 1 and, and have three in mid just floating. If, if Heroic bring the heat mid early, G2 will just default with three mid and then, you know, play reactively. If they see that it's not the majority of Heroic, they see the bombs going elsewhere, they send rotations. And because you're all in mid, those rotations are so quick. G2 with a nice read on the CT side. They've found 15, they've done the dirty. They just need to do one more to push us to Mirage. Amanek again fighting ramp. The smoke is down, Heroic can't see a thing. Nico, he's pushed up in a good position that G2 might not be ready for. It's gonna go through the smoke, that's a great play. Nico with two, they're not ready for the pace. He has been there every round off of spawn and finally he's gonna show its value going through their own smoke to find a double kill into this A site. Overtime is still a possibility here. Kenny is going to try and jump up on top of the boxes, look for kills. He's got the first. If he jumps here, they're watching him though. Next, he's found a second. This round could still fall apart for Heroic. They can't afford to lose it. This was a five on three, now level-headed. Boost up towards GT. Bombs killed Nexa. Kenny with the trade, Nico in the site, and the bomb's been lost. Oh dear, and it's fallen very far in harm's way. Nico has retrieved the bomb, but a 1v2 to navigate. This guy needs to drop 30 here if he wants to lock in this 14th round for Heroic. He's waiting for peaks. Nothing is getting offered up. He's going to stick the bomb plant here and now. Kenny raining out a shot. Gives Nico a little bit of room to maneuver. But out from elevator is Jax. He gets bested. Now down to the 1v1. Nico, this would be his 30th kill wow. of the game. But Kenny steals it all away. And he steals the map with it. <laughs> Shooting at the body. GG to G2. As they take Vertigo, they lock in the third.